Hello and welcome to Climb's podcast series, Advancing Vietnam, with me, Vlad Savin, as your host. Throughout the following episodes, we're looking to answering relevant questions about doing business in Vietnam. What are the opportunities and challenges faced by investors entering the market or existing players in major industries? We will seek to understand the business environment from a cultural, local mindset and how to deal with compliance from an international perspective. What are the major risks faced by uh, businesses active in the region and how to overcome them? We will dive deep into the compliance environment in Vietnam, discussing processes and procedures, changes in laws, latest official updates from the authorities and financial governance planning for businesses active in Vietnam. We at the client consider compliance a major asset for foreign investors operating in Vietnam. We emphasize this aspect when speaking with our clients and we make sure they understand the significant benefits of being compliant. In this episode, I'm discussing with Matthew Lowry, managing partner at a client Vietnam, about the latest transfer pricing requirements in Vietnam, the current regulatory changes, and how investors maintain compliance and ensure they are protected from any inspections from the authorities. Matthew, welcome again to a new episode of Advanced Vietnam podcast series. Great to be here, Vlad. It's the last last one for the year, and it's an interesting topic, especially because the the uh, fiscal tax year end is coming, and transfer pricing is a very important topic for in, uh, international investors here. Absolutely, Vietnam, as absolutely. You know. We have discussed actually multiple times and wrote several articles about guides covering transfer pricing regulations in Vietnam. However, this conversation is very timely as we see a significant shift from the Vietnamese authorities the past 12 months towards actively reviewing, enforcing, and challenging transfer pricing documentation from foreign investors operating in Vietnam. What happened in this last uh, 12 months and what is your current experience with the, with the current status in the market? So if you look at transfer pricing, it's been like a five or six year journey from effectively no formal requirements as we know them now to a very rigid regime. We saw this when it first being implemented, it was focusing purely on manufacturing, import export businesses, now it's across the board. The authorities have a much more educated workforce. Um, the tax authorities have trained their staff and they are focusing far more on um, those who are not following international best practice. Vietnamese transfer pricing is fundamentally, um, or a macro sense, a replication of international practice. It, obviously, every country has slight differences how they apply it, but it's we're something that we can't ignore. So it is an important part of regulatory compliance in Vietnam now where it wasn't in the past and that does require at end of year making sure you are compliant it's not just we'll fix it later you need to be compliant as we go and for many businesses that's never been the case so we're now in a situation where everyone's exposed who meets who meets the requirements or doesn't meet the exemptions everyone must prepare documents and must lodge certain information to and to to show the authorities that they're compliant. So the authorities know if you're not compliant very, very quickly and you make yourself a big target. And we're just uh, preparing now an article looking at uh, num numbers of inspections uh, across the entire year 2022 compared with 2021. And we've seen that there's almost a, a doubling of that number uh, from the authority side, tax inspections and also related parties focused tra uh, transaction inspections. Related party transfer pricing is easier for an inspection, then it's a very straightforward, you, you either meet, have the documents and you meet the requirements or you don't. So from the authorities, it's so much easier to focus on transfer pricing for, um, than it is to do normal tax inspections. Mm -hmm. So of course they're going to do more of them and they're going to continue to ramp up mm -hmm. because of the revenue gains, potential revenue gains to the government. So uh, I don't see this slowing down. I see this doubling in the first, I think it was the first 10 months this year and it doubled for last year. I see that happening and doubling and doubling again. Mm -hmm. Uh, as the fiscal year end is approaching, it's important for companies related parties to um, with related, related party transactions to evaluate the transfer pricing documentation and start preparing and evaluate uh, the, the strategies that they have in place to ensure compliance. Before we look into documentation, can we explain first what are the current thresholds for being classified as related party of an enterprise in Vietnam? Um, so um, related party is 25% um, ownership control, or um, the subsidiary relationships. There, there's a, so there's a um, general definition is that if you are um, owned by or partly owned by another entity, there's related party. Mm -hmm. um, there is also potentially, if you're doing trading majority or solely with one enterprise, you could be related to that enterprise because of the control test. So we are looking at a very, very broad definition related party. If you've got a company which has a 25% co-ownership in another company, they're related. 
So mm. we have to then say, okay, we've got related, um, we meet the definition, we then must make, are we exempt? So related mm. party is, um, it's very broad from a control, ownership, or um, transactional basis. Mm -hmm. So so that is fair. So you've got to test that. You've got to go through and look at the specifics of do you meet it, percentage sales-wise, et cetera. But um, it is very broad in, in, in the first sense. Mm -hmm. And before we go to exemptions, let's discuss first about the, the key TP documents that investors need to prepare. I know there are appendixes, there are main reports, country by country reports. What are those key um, um, important documents that they need to have ready and they need to prepare before the authorities actually visit uh, within an expansion. So the, the documents have got to be prepared and have exist. You've got to have your local file, the local details, master file, which is how you're doing cross-border activities. And then you may need a country by country, which is the sort of, if you're large enough, the, the, the how it all works across the globe. Um, you must have them prepared and available. So within 30 days of the authorities requesting those documents, you must have them available. So with those documents being available in Vietnamese language, and just be in mind, 30 days is not long to prepare this and, all, and also translate. There must be in Vietnamese. So um, don't assume you can just get notified and do that. So the first part is you must have those documents. There's ability to get a 15-day extension, but do not bank on that. It's not always guaranteed. It's only in certain circumstances. So let's assume I must have local file, master file, and potentially country by country ready within 30 days of inspection. But as you said, there's also further notification. So we must lodge with our CIT return, which is due by the 30th of, um, 31st of, 30th of March each year, we must lodge the appendices to our corporate income tax return. Now, well, Vietnamese, well, in Vietnam, we've always done a Form 0, which is related party, um, details of related party. So you've got that as an appendix, but you also must detail the information that's contained in your local file and your master file. Which, if you don't have, it's very hard to prepare the appendix and lodge it. And what we find are those, when they actually get around to doing it, it doing these, it differs to what you've already lodged. So, the, so they've got a decision is, do you go back and amend your CIT return to make sure it's consistent with your transfer pricing documentation and alert the authorities that you maybe weren't compliant or you've got issues, or do you just do nothing and hope you don't get inspected and no one finds out? Again, that, both of those are not good options. Mm -hmm. um, so it is about doing this in advance, making sure you have those documentation and the appendices and the, the, the details, which is the appendices, which is very high level, still matches what you actually produce with those documents that you need for your transfer pricing, for substantiating the pricing that you are using for related party transactions. Mm -hmm. And those uh, specific lodgements with the CIT for appendixes, uh, all companies need to submit them or just the ones that actually meet the transfer pricing? If you're exempt, you don't need to submit those. Mm -hmm. So it's only those. You still need to put related parties. So mm -hmm. you still need that related party disclosure, the old form, mm -hmm. form one, is required to detail who are your related parties. So mm -hmm. that is that is that that doesn't change. Mm -hmm. It's just the, you don't need to prepare those um, local file or master file mm -hmm. if you're exempt, therefore you don't need to put the appendices for those. And now coming back to exemptions, uh, what are those key uh, rules and regulations for investors being exempt from preparing the transfer pricing uh, documentation? So the exemptions are based around um, a number of different factors here. So the first one is if you're dealing with local Vietnamese companies that have the same tax rate as you have, essentially you don't have to deal with things. So in-country related parties where they're the same tax rate, um, not subject to um, related party transactions or tra transfer pricing. Um, you can be caught if they've got tax, they've, they've got one of your related parties in Vietnam has tax exemptions or tax deferrals, yes. But if you're both on the same tax rate, then you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and people say, oh, it's Vietnamese, it's a local transaction. It can still be caught out if one's got an, an industrial park or has, an, has a, a historical tax um, reduction, that will be caught. The second exemption is if you have left less than 50 billion Vietnam dong, just over 2 million US dollars of total transactions, and the related party transactions are less than 30 billion. You gotta meet both, both of those. If you fail one, you're not exempt. So if less than 50 billion Vietnamese dong in revenue, and 30 billion in local trend, in related party transactions. The next one is there are some ratios, some safe harbor ratios. So if you are a um, distributor, manufacturer or producer, um, you and you're earning 5% um, as the distributor, 10% as a manufacturer and 15% as a um, producer, um, those ratios, if you use those ratios, you are exempt from requiring documentation. So it's basically, if you're a large business, 
but it's just too hard to do documents. Just earn, make sure you're earning those those um, returns, and the authorities will, um, under the law, you're deemed as exempt from producing documentation because you're using the safe harbour um, mm -hmm. um, provisions. Now, they're specifically for um, manufacturing, distribution, production. They're not for service businesses. So mm -hmm. this, there is no safe harbour for service businesses or those who are not um, within those three classifications. So mm -hmm. even though they're quite useful, they don't give us um, a complete safe harbour. So they're, the, they're basically the exemptions. If you don't meet those exemptions, you are in the transfer pricing system and documentation is required. Mm -hmm. And one of the common um, um, mindsets that we see with the investors here in Vietnam, uh, specifically in the service sector, is that they assume that they're exempt in a sense that they, they're not a manufacturing, they don't have large amounts, and then in their minds, they don't even have to look at the transfer price documentation or even do a review about them because they, they assume that uh, just the scale of their, of their business is, is so low that nobody's going to look at them. And that's where I think investors start getting caught lately. Um, yeah, correct. And maybe they were exempt. Maybe they were under the thresholds. Yeah. But it's when they meet, when they exceed, oh, I'll just pick a rate. It's okay. Well, you can pick a rate, and maybe that rate is an effective rate. You do your study, and you can justify it. So, um, the whole idea of a local file, a master file, is to determine what the appropriate um, related party rate is, and to justify that rate using benchmarks. So they may have a correct rate. But if you can't justify it with the documentation required, um, it's pointless. You're not meeting mm. the requirements of the transfer pricing, which is to justify the related party pricing mechanism that you use so that there is no um, transferring of profits outside of Vietnam. Speaking of arm's length, Decree 132 released in uh, 2020 has reduced the acceptable uh, range price from 25% and 75% under Decree 2020. Now it's being 35% and 75%. How does this affect investors? So what we had, um, the Decree 20, which is written in 2017, was the original one, and then we've moved to Decree 132 as this transition. Um, they've tightened the bands. So you've got to be, your market pricing and your pricing to your related parties must be much more aligned. So if you've got a, a range of prices for the market, your related parties must be in the middle of that range. And that's one of the pricing, um, when you're doing your studies, you're doing benchmarking, you're doing um, percentile pricing, it's one of the tests that you must satisfy when you're doing your justifications. And it's not just, oh, I can, you know, I, I make 10% margin, it's okay, and I make 20% of everyone else. Well, you're probably gonna fail because even though you may be able to justify 10%, if you actually don't um, fit within the requirements. So it's not just a basic pick a number and justify it. it is you must go through the mechanisms to ensure you're compliant with the rules. As I said at the start, the Vietnamese rules are based on the OECD standard as a, as a general approach. So that most of, the, most of the approaches done in foreign jurisdictions is what's required in Vietnam. And I think that's missed a lot of the time. It's I mean, just pick something, that number won't matter. And if you don't review that, if you don't support that, if you haven't done your studies, your benchmarking, um, you haven't confirmed that you're within your required percentiles, um, maybe you did it in the past under the old decree and no longer compliant. So that's very important to make sure that you're in that range on the percentile as part of that study and as part of the testing. Mm -hmm. What about advanced uh, pricing agreements? Can these be a replacement for certain types of companies of the TP full documentation and analysis if they're in place? What are they and how do investors use them? So it's a good point you raise, the advanced pricing arrangements, and I'd ignore them, you are exempt, if you've got an APA in place, you are exempt from the other requirements. You don't need to lodge appendixes, you don't need to do anything. And the reason I ignore that is there are very few APAs in place in practice. So APAs are common internationally, advanced pricing agreements that you um, disclosing with the authorities, sitting down with them and coming to an agreement for kind of the next five years about how you, Vietnam and globally, do your um, transfer pricing. So it is an, exactly as it sounds. It's an agreement for, um, about what's going to happen, and it's a transparent disclosure. Now, in theory, that sounds great. And in many countries, it's one of the key ways to deal with transfer pricing is just to have a bunch of APAs. Vietnam, we have not seen that as a path um, which is practical at this stage. It, there are APAs in place, but my last review um, where I looked at it was, we're talking a few handfuls. We're not talking large numbers. I think it's path, it, it is the path we want to go down, but right now it's not something that really is practical for the vast majority, um, but keep an eye out. I think, it's, I think it's where we need to be heading as a nation um, for the authorities, it makes it easier for them, it makes it easier from a compliance perspective. What about large scale investors such as Samsung, Apple, Lego that came in 2021? 
what uh, do you think they have in place these APAs from the moment where they enter the market or they're looking at the transfer pricing? Um, some of those have APAs, um, but I couldn't tell you which ones, but I know some of those names, they have APAs in place. Mm-hmm. It's in their interest to do so. Negotiate at a very large level. But as I said, there aren't many APAs. Mm-hmm. So um, yes, everyone wants them, but the authorities, they're not mature enough in systems. They're still, you know, we saw Decree 132 did change quite a few things. It's trying to make this more mature and APAs will become the norm into the future. But for now, it's a, it's a select few. So of those you've mentioned, yes, there are some APAs with those in place, but it's not the norm. It's it's the exception at the moment. Mm-hmm. And to close this discussion, uh, what is it, in your opinion, the first priority that uh, investors that may have or may not even know that they, they actually fit in the requirements of related party transactions, what is the first priority for them to look into when they think about uh, uh, potential transfer pricing compliance? So there's a few parts of that, actually. I think there's a number of different things you have to do. So um, every year, I'd be doing this in November or December, every year, sitting down and going through what the legislation is, or do we meet the requirements, where do we stand to give yourself enough time if, you are, if you've tripped over the requirements during the year, or if your um, exemption has changed, some things that you're aware of it. You must do that. And that's, that is, that first, it is that almost the health check it's, at, it's at, um, the governance check to make sure that where do we stand right now? It doesn't, you know, you may, may have local file, master file, but maybe the criteria have changed. Maybe you've changed. So it's that review every year. It's to make sure that you've got a transfer pricing study on an annual basis if you, are, if you don't meet the exemptions and to make sure that your documents remain up to date. So it's a constant process. Um, and don't assume, as you said earlier, that just because I wasn't, I was exempt in the past, it doesn't mean I'm exempt in the future. And it doesn't mean my numbers I'm using, even though I've done documentation once, can carry forward and be acceptable. The laws keep changing. Um, there's deduct, you know, interest deductibility is part of the transfer pricing regime, and some of your other decisions may affect that. So you need to, at the end of each, towards the end of each year, do an internal review and make sure that you, you, what you are doing makes sense. So step one, that health check, sanity check on your TP requirements and where you stand, then it's that transfer pricing study or documentation to show that you're exempt. And you must do that on an annual basis and you must do that regularly and you can't wait till you've done your tax returns to do that because, as we said earlier, you've got to make sure your appendices match what you're actually preparing at the end of the day. And before we close, actually, uh, have you been part or have you uh, experienced specific uh, tax inspections on transfer pricing and how the authorities deal with them and how, how risky are them for um, investors looking at uh, price adjustments and then going back for potentially three to five years into fixing them and uh, realigning the, the taxation for, for the entire um, tax structures? They're, they're quite um, professional in how they approach. They will challenge... If you don't have documentation, you're in big trouble. They will just assume and deem and go back and rechange things. And it's very hard to argue. So it's a, if, you're, if you don't have the, the transfer pricing documentation, you're in a difficult position. You are really arguing against, um, proving that they're wrong and arguing against the system. Where we've done inspections where we've got documentation, it's very much about just defending what you've done. And um, by, uh, by and large, it is a relatively straightforward process. It is about where you don't have it. But that said, if your documentation, if you've done your studies and it is questionable, your choices of comparables, it's questionable the process, they'll, they'll redo it. They'll redo that for you and they'll redeem something and it'll go back five years, go back longer. So yeah, the, the, so they will um, make sure that the documentation is appropriate with the law. So just remember, your benchmarks have to be used relevant companies using relevant databases to show that you're consistent with the industry. The benchmarks your provider uses must be relevant. Therefore, the authorities can test that. So documentation is very important. Mm-hmm. Matthew, thank you again for participating in the Advanced Vietnam podcast series. Interesting discussion. And let's hope uh, international investors can actually take some insights out of it and prepare at, at least to have a mindset of preparation before the tax authorities actually look at the transfer pricing documentation. Great to talk in today.
as Vietnamese authorities are increasing their oversight over enterprises in Vietnam with related party transactions and are pursuing focused tax inspections on transfer pricing, we advise investors to be proactive with their TP compliance and undertake regular reviews of their documentation, ensuring they satisfy the current requirements and have an efficient cross-border tax strategy. And many thanks to you, our listeners, for tuning in to the Advancing Vietnam podcast series. For more information about this topic, please check out our publications on vietnam.techline.com. And if you want to reach out to us for any additional details, feel free to contact me on LinkedIn or throughout the website contact details.